private game reserves are now empowering themselves with anti-poaching units with well-trained guards watching over the rhino 24-7 and patrolling boundary fences. Poaching is big money and roughly 90% of poaching incidents on private reserves have some form of internal involvement. Men uh, guarding rhino are very well uh, vetted and scrutinized before employment and obviously every third month they go through a vetting process of a, doing a polygraph test to see whether they have been approached by uh, poachers to sort of sell out their own. Dehorning the animals and the taking of DNA are just some of the measures being put in place to deter poachers. These rhino are having their DNA recorded. This data is of great value for the police if an animal has been poached. So if the horn get, end up in the east or whatever, uh, we can take the DNA samples from the horn and we can trace it back all the way to South Africa again or to the specific reserve. The importance of that is obviously for law enforcement. Uh, so it's quite important to know where the animal was poached, when it was poached and all of that. Uh, all these, all these data that we collect from these animals are being kept in a centralized data, data bank. It's called the Rhoda system. Poachers are identifiable by the different methods they use. Um, it's either by knife, uh, axe or machete. Uh, even in more sophisticated cases they'll use um, uh, uh, veterinary equipment or even uh, chainsaws. But uh, in the Eastern Cape we've had the more sophisticated ones. But uh, you can almost see on the way the horn has been removed where the criminals come from. Namibia was the first country to use dehorning as a deterrent. Between 1989 and the early 1990s, dehorning coupled with improvements in security and funding for anti-poaching is perceived by stakeholders to have contributed to the decrease in poaching. Some reserves and game parks in South Africa have now also resorted to dehorning. A very difficult decision because you're obviously um, altering the look of the animal and it just feels wrong, but a very important because even although we've got a 24-hour watch and guard on the animals and we keep an eye on them all the time, we just thought we needed to do something a little bit extra just to safeguard them. Belita, a six-year-old female, was next. This is the second dehorning of these rhino in three years. A decision not taken lightly, but one taken in the best interest of the animals. It's not something that I advocate as a blanket solution. But when we know that there's an imminent threat to animals, uh, if the pressure around them is great, then it does reduce the rewards and, and hopefully disincentivize poachers uh, to kill those specific animals. While the experts in the field do what they can, poaching has sparked public outrage. Global marches and events are commonplace. The man in the street uses these opportunities to become involved in the preservation of their heritage. Our children's children will never know a rhino possibly and if they do they wouldn't know that a rhino had horns five, six years ago. And that to me is a tragedy. That needs to stop and the only way that can stop is by people being aware of it and people wanting to stop it and putting pressure on those who can make those decisions. For the past three years the rhino run has become a global initiative to create awareness. It's a means for the individual to show support and keep poaching in the news. You can't give up because you just can't give up. We've all got to keep doing one thing, and if we all keep doing one thing, it's got to make a difference. South Africa also boasts some of the best environmental legislation in the world. We are in a far better place than we've ever been in our history when it comes to environmental legislation. Uh, we are on a number of global bodies. We are leaders in certain fields. Uh, we have excellent environmental impact legislation. Uh, we have uh, very good legislation around specific issues. But the best laws have to be enforced and for now the killing continues. The continued poaching of rhinos has seen progressive steps by the government to improve systems and sentences. The handing down of severe sentences needs to continue in order to send a strong message to potential poachers. Janine Lee, SABC News, Port Elizabeth.